So kind of wanted to go over today just uh, exactly what this bike, what's its intent, and uh, who would be a good fit for it, what kind of rider would be a good fit for it. And I also wanted to go over some new gear that I just recently got. As you guys can see, I'm rocking the Alpine Stars right now. I just recently picked this gear up. It's on the more expensive side. I'd probably say it's like, I don't know, mid-level adventure gear. It's Alpine Stars uh, Touring. It has the, the uh, oh, I forgot what they call it, Alpine, Alpine Dry or whatever. Anyways, it's waterproof. It's uh, right now we're still obviously in the winter time over here in the Northwest. So I'm kind of riding in the, in the cold weather right now. I want to say it's, my GPS say 45 degrees at the moment, which is pretty chilly. So I really wanted to take this draw or this ride in the in in this weather because I wanted to test this new gear out. Um, it's got insulation inside of it, well, an insulated barrier inside, so it has liners basically. It's all it is. There's a liner for the pants and then a liner for the um, jacket itself. And uh, I can, to be completely honest with you, in 45 degrees, I'm going 70. 75 right now I should probably shouldn't be I didn't realize that Let me reel it down a little bit um, going 65 now that's a little better anyways I'm actually pretty warm the only thing that I could say that is getting cold right now on me is I want to say it's my uh, my chest area and that is because yep I didn't zip my jacket up all the way I hate when I do that anyways so as of right now I'm staying pretty pretty toasty um, Obviously the windscreen helps a little bit to keep the wind off my chest to kind of keep my core temperature where it should be and it doesn't, you know, allow me to get super cold, at least quickly anyways. Um, but uh, as of right now, this gear is great. I mean, I haven't ridden in the rain with it, so I can't really vouch for its dryness, but I can tell you the gear that I had before this, which was just kind of like a, a very low end um, beginner gear. It was Sadishi and uh, adventure gear. It just had the overpants and the jacket and it was nice, um, it, it was not insulated. I did have like a wind a wind breaker insulation on it, but it wasn't like a, a cold weather insulation. So it, it didn't really help in that aspect, but this stuff has the insulated um, liner for the, like I said, the jacket and the pants, and it's, it's doing leaps and bounds better than that Sadishi was doing. And I don't wanna like dump all over the Sadishi because it was a really good beginner gear. And I'm not sure if I mentioned it in the previous video, but the Sadishi is a good way to start. It, it, ran, it ran in about, I, I wanna say it was like 400 bucks for um, the pants and the jacket and that's pretty good so anyways with that set aside there's your your base baseline of gear price would be the Sadishi and that's probably the cheapest you could get you could definitely go cheaper but you're gonna sacrifice some safety so um, anyways that was good I'm glad to have upgraded though because this stuff it's amazing um, the Sadishi stuff so every time you sat on the motorcycle like you see how my knees are bent right now every time I would sit down the pants were never true to size, the length wasn't. So the waist fit good and when you were standing, the pants would fit good too. They weren't just a little bit longer um, like I would like them to have been. So when you would sit down, the pant leg would rise up above the boot and it would make for a very uncomfortable and um, annoying ride and it actually presented some hazards because it would take your attention off the road because you kept trying to fiddle with your pants and pull the pant leg back down over your boot. And it definitely made things a lot colder um, with that too. So with these, they're full length. Even when I am sitting down, they're still over my boots. And man, I can't be my, I can't be happier. This is an awesome set of riding gear. I can't wait to do a video in the rain so we can uh, test what it's uh, what it's like in the rain and how waterproof it is. Um, and it has these adjustment straps on the arms, and and it's got this stuff called ghost armor. Um, it's really flexible armor. It almost feels like it's not even there. I believe, I want to say the company is Axial or Axel or yeah, it's one of those two. Anyways, they make it and uh, it's really good stuff. I'm, I'm super happy with it. Um, I don't have their back protector, but the back protector they have is Alpine Stars back protector. And, and uh, I'll link all the gear that I'm wearing in the description below so you guys can check it out for yourselves. But for total price for this gear plus the back protector because they never come with the jackets, I had to add that in. So total price for the pants, um, the jacket, and the back protector came in, came in at about 700 bucks. Um, 
which is still a pretty good price for the gear that I have because the way these zip together, so the pants are a suspender style. So you, they're just like regular pants and they have suspenders that go over your shoulders to help keep them up. And then they zip together and it's almost like a three quarter zip. So the only thing that doesn't zip is your front. So from your sides, from one side, I'd say the ends, the front inside of your side, I guess, if that makes any sense, zips all the way around to the other front inside to your side. Um, as confusing as that was, I, I hope you understood that because uh, I, I confused myself there. So anyways, fantastic gear. Um, but I will link everything in the description. I want you guys to check it out and uh, make your own judgments. Um, I will say though, Alpine Stars runs very, very, very small. And I mean very small. I mean typically an extra large in the overpants. I had to get 4XL for these pants. It made me a little bit self-conscious when I bought them, but I knew it wasn't an actual normal size. So keep that in mind. If you're buying these online and you cannot try them on, go bigger than you think you should ever have to go on pants. Now the jacket's pretty true to size. This is a 2XL. It's big enough to get a hoodie underneath it. So it does pretty good on, on the jacket size. But for some reason, the pants run extremely small and that's uh, really annoying. So um, anyways, there's a little bit of that on the gear. And we are almost, we're probably about another, I don't know, 25 minutes out from uh, the OHV area. Um, I will uh, catch you guys when I get there. Welcome back. All right, now we're getting into it. So we were just hit with quite an ice storm. Oh, I don't know, probably two weeks ago or so. And uh, this place is a mess. <laughs> I haven't been up here in a little while. Um, but yeah, no, there's there's down trees all over the place. Sawdust all over the ground from people cutting trees up, as you can see back there. Um, yeah, no, there's debris everywhere. It's crazy how bad that ice storm uh, hit us. Um, but as promised, here we are. In the OHV area of my choosing, most times. So let's uh, let's take a little trip through this. Okay, so I kind of wanted to uh, talk about the intent of this bike. So BMW markets it. Markets. I don't know what I just did there. <laughs> they market it as. Um, Wow, this place is a mess, to be honest with you. This is crazy. They market it as a adventure bike, right? So a few problems with marketing as that is this bike isn't really set up. Oh man, that's crazy. I don't even think we can get through here. We're gonna find out, I guess. Oh, maybe we can. Um, few problems with it. It's not really set up out of the factory as an adventure bike. Uh, uh, hold on. Okay. Wow. And we're back. This place is insane. I've never seen it like this. There's so many down trees all over the place. Um, anyways, the market has a venture bike. Let me uh, pick up where I left off because I keep getting sidetracked. Sorry. A um, few problems is it doesn't really come out. Uh, super capable i mean don't get me wrong it will do what um bmw says it'll do it'll go off road um it'll do all that it will uh obviously you know i haven't done anything to this it, aside from just cosmetic things oh man um so it'll go off road just fine suspension's okay problem with the suspension is it's super plush so um, it doesn't like to absorb things real well. So you're gonna bottom out a lot. Um, and typically they're not very big bumps. Uh, so suspension's kind of key um, in any kind of adventure bike. Now obviously there is some, um, you know, different manufacturers you can go through. Rally Raid's one of them. Um, Ooh, that was a deep one. I uh, personally have not done any of Rally Raid's products, uh, but they look really cool. They're just really expensive. Um, so when you start getting into adventure bike or adventuring through this kind of stuff, 
um, really rutted out roads, single track, that kind of stuff. It kind of falls short in that area. And it's not, I'm, <laughs> these are deep. Um, so it falls short in that area. Much deeper than the last time I was up here. Um, so it falls short. Sorry, I keep repeating myself because I keep getting sidetracked. Falls short in that area. Doesn't make it a bad machine. It's actually a really good machine. And uh, the reason it's, it's so good in this, in this environment, even being um, underbuilt, is because of the, the weight of it. It's, it's very light in comparison to other, other adventure bikes. If you guys wanted to know about the gear being waterproof, like I had mentioned earlier, I just got drenched by that last few puddles and, and it's doing really good. It's keeping it all out. Um, oh, geez, didn't see that one. Um, but even though it's so underbuilt for what uh, they market it as, it does a really good job simply because it's lightweight. And because it's lightweight, you can make it do things that otherwise you couldn't make other bikes do that are heavier, like the 850 and the, and, um, oh, I don't know, the uh, the Tenere 700, that kind of stuff, because they're, they're quite a bit heavier than this. This is, comes in at about 400 pounds, um, which is a pretty good weight for something like this. Uh, I absolutely, thoroughly love this bike. I own myself my Kawasaki 300 um, as a dirt bike, and it's, I mean, it's, it's tons of fun. I love taking it off-road. It's never a dull moment, um, but this is so much fun because it's, I don't know, for me, it's just... It's so cool to be able to take something like this and not have to trailer it or or carry or uh, load it in the back of a pickup and drive to where you want to go. It's it's I just like riding, so it's so much more fun to just ride there and uh, and do what I what I what I want to do with it. Um, so this is awesome. It's awesome for the new the new rider. It's awesome for the experienced rider. I mean, this bike has a wide range of of, of uses and and a wide range of people that could ride it and would probably have a lot of fun riding it because I do have a lot of fun riding it. It's very basic. There's there's really no technology on it. Um, as far as an adventure bike, this is probably as basic as you're going to get outside of say a KLR 650 and and those those bikes are are uh, very very basic. Um, and, but they're also really heavy too, which is a downside. Uh, and they're they're just tanks, you know. They're big, middleweight adventure bikes, and they're heavy. And and you know they get the job done. They do what they're supposed to do. Um, they're as from what I've heard, they're tons of fun to ride. I've never ridden one before. Um, but anyways, back on the 310, fantastic bike. It's it's so good because it is light. And if if you fall on it, you can pick it back up. It's not going to crush you. Uh, you're not going to get hurt going down on a trail um, you can turn it around super easy in tight areas which is a big deal with these bigger adventure bikes you really can't do that with a lot of them because they're so darn heavy you know uh, I was looking at the weight of a Harley Davidson Pan America and those are coming in at are like I want to say uh, in the upper 400 pounds I could be wrong I, I know I'm sorry I want to say they're 500 pounds I could be wrong I'm gonna have to uh, I'll post it in this in, in the video to uh, correct myself because I I'm pretty positive I'm wrong um, but uh, yeah it, it's great for a wide array of riders um, you can obviously tell it's doing this gravel road just fine it's got plenty of clearance for this stuff I want to say the front suspension travels seven inches um, I don't want to I don't I don't know why I want to say seven because uh, I mean I guess it sounds right seven inches I'll, again I'll post that if I'm wrong as well um, but yeah so this is I just wanted to kind of talk about it go over the bike a little I haven't done it in a long time I know I made a 5,000 mile review um, and uh, oh <laughs> going over some branches there it's always sketchy I don't have dirt tires on this so I don't it's not necessarily the most uh, I don't have a whole lot of confidence in these kind of roads with it it does really good you now in um, someone they're doing a little camping uh, um, uh, dry dry dirt gravel and that kind of stuff these tires are fantastic they do just fine but in this stuff it's a little slicker so it's uh, easier to lose traction because they're almost a street tire I mean they they do have some grip to them but not a lot um, so yeah they're a borderline a street tire um, so yeah I just kind of really wanted to talk about that a little bit and kind of take you guys on this little adventure through 
um, what I figured was going to be a pretty fun little spot, and it's turning out that that is exactly what it's being. It's 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 pretty fun. So uh, yeah, just hang out with me for a little bit, and uh, let's see what kind of trouble we can get into. Hopefully, nothing serious. I think I'm gonna have to pull off though and zip my jacket the rest of the way up or under my chin because uh, I'm a little chilly getting there. Man, it's crazy how bad this ice storm hit this place. It definitely was not like this uh, the last time I was up here. So it's kind of a shocking thing to see. A lot of downed trees. Ugh. My, uh, my, t uh, my video I made, the five things I learned in the last two years of riding, my BMW has hit 20,000 views. I just want to say thanks for that, guys. That's, that's incredible. Um, I know it's just one video, but it seems like that video has really made an impact for people. People have found a lot of good value out of it. Ugh. And uh, I'm super glad and, and happy about that. I've gotten a lot of response, a lot of interaction from everybody out there. Um, some good, some bad, some mixed. Um, those, that was just solely my opinion on, on my experience writing it. And uh, I'm going to do another one. I think I'm about four years into owning this bike. And I'm going to do another, as soon as I hit the four year mark, uh, I'll do another um, my experience video. And uh, maybe, maybe we'll compare and contrast from the two-year mark to the four-year mark and see how if my opinions have changed or or have stayed the same but yeah no that's super cool like 20,000 views I never thought I could I'd make a video with that so I appreciate that uh, I really do oh man I do have to get some better handle handlebar uh, risers as you can see I'm standing up right now on it and it's not really a great motorcycle to stand up on um, it's kind of oh my goodness my arms you see that my wrists are pried against the mirror so I'd be afraid that if I were to go over the handlebars in this position I'd probably hurt myself um, so I'm trying to take it easy be having to ride back in the dark on this one sun sets at about 5 30 around here over here on the west coast um, i'm not sure about where you guys are but where i am i don't have much light left in the day so we'll we'll make this a real long one but man this is so much so much fun to get back out on the bike and go experience the outdoors because it was uh a long time since I was I'm able to get back out here and do this. Last time I was up here, oh geez, with my dirt bike, my son and I were up here and I came flying around a trail. It's a corner, came flying around it, and boom, ran right into a mama bear and her cubs. That was uh, <laughs> eye-opening, that's for sure. Um, she took off, luckily, but I mean, I was within probably 15 to 20 feet of her. That's crazy, you know, that was the first time I've seen a black bear in the wild, and uh, I really thought they'd be bigger. She wasn't that big. I mean, still doesn't mean she doesn't pack quite the punch, but she definitely wasn't as big as I thought. First time seeing one, and I really don't want to see one again. Um, I don't know. I just like to have fun. I don't. I don't want to go out and deal with all the all the dangers of the woods. You know, unfortunately, they're there, and I just I like I like looking at them from a distance, but not not uh, not the distance I was at with her. That's that's for sure. Oh. Sit down. Uh-oh. Yep, I knew that was going to be a rough one. 
rip up these roads. All right, we got a full tank of gas, some warm gear. We're feeling pretty good today. I hope you guys are having a good day. I hope you guys have been having a good week. Um, I've been pretty fortunate doing 410 schedules, so um, I don't work Fridays, so I get, uh-oh, I get Friday off. So that's been really cool to be able to have three-day weekends. Um, so yeah, I know I'm having a good weekend so far. Being able to come out and do this stuff with you guys and hang out. Looks like we're getting to a little bit colder. Getting into the snow a little bit. Oh! We're at a 40, still 45 degrees, so says my GPS. Whether or not that's true, I don't, I don't know. Further up here. I'm not sure if my GoPro is in the correct setting. So if you guys are watching this and it's kind of blurry and whatnot, I do apologize. I didn't uh, think to stop and look before I started filming. And that's uh, it's dumb on my part. I'm going to pull off right here, a little further up, for a quick second. Because <sighs> I find neutral in this. <sighs> okay. Alright guys. Get some air in my helmet. My fingertips are freezing. There she is. Soaking wet. I've gone through puddles that uh, were a lot deeper than I thought, as you can tell, and I'm soaked. Um, bike is soaked. Muddy, having a good time. This place is gorgeous. It's an awesome place. Um, get yourself some good gear if you're gonna ride out in this uh, kind of environment. Um, simply because, uh, man, the Northwest is a cold environment, cold and wet. So if you're gonna, if you want to ride a motorcycle out here, you're gonna have to get used to it, because uh, otherwise you're gonna be parking your bike for like six months out of the year until summer comes, and then you're only gonna be able to ride for like three months. Um, yeah, I'm trying to warm my fingertips up right now on my exhaust because it is ridiculously cold. See, there's snow on the ground and. The further I go up, the colder it gets, <laughs> but uh, we're having a good time. So um, anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Um, it's been a real pleasure to come back in and, and make another video and speak with you guys again and, and share some experiences and get back on the bike. And, and I hope you guys enjoy this video and uh, stay tuned for more because I'm going to get back on posting. Try, I'll try to post once a week. Um, my situation right now is a little chaotic with my bike being in a storage unit um, away, so it's a little bit more of a of a hassle to get to it and get everything prepped and ready to go. Um, but no excuses. I'm going to try at least once a week to get a video out and uh, stay in contact with everybody. Uh, so yeah, like I said, I hope you enjoy it. Like and subscribe. Hit the thumbs up. Share it with your friends. And um, I will see you guys on the next video.